Hello, my name is Alison Brunier, and I'm pleased to come to you today from the World Health Organization in Geneva. And today on this Facebook Live, we'll be talking about COVID-19 and older people. And I'm delighted to have with me today as our guest, Alana Officer from WHO's team for democratic change, demographic change and healthy aging. Hello, Alana. Hi, Alison. Lovely to be here. Thank you. So during the day's today's show, we'll be, as I say, we'll be talking about COVID-19 and older people. We'll be talking about how COVID-19 is affecting older people, particularly the over 60s, how older people can protect themselves from infection, how they can stay physically and mentally healthy during the pandemic, and also how to continue contributing to families and communities during the pandemic. If you'd like to ask your questions to Alana, please do so. Um, send your questions onto the uh, Facebook comments uh, page and we'll be happy to take your questions. But maybe before we do that, let's just start off uh, with a first question for Alana. So Alana, can you tell us how has COVID-19 affected older people? Thanks, Alison. So, thanks, Alison. During the pandemic, when we hear older people referred to, um, it's as if they're all the same, all frail, all vulnerable, all in need of protection. Um, but this couldn't be really further from the truth. So you've got a lifetime. People, Older people have a lifetime of experience, which makes every older person really unique. Some older people have sort of the capacity of, of a 30, 40-year-old, whereas other people who are 16 and above require support for some very basic activities of daily living. Older people also have very different networks and resources in terms of their family and their financial resources. And it's really because of these incredible differences that their experience also of the pandemic has been very diverse. So some older people have really struggled to get access to the most basic needs, food, medicine, um, uh, uh, money, their pensions. Some older people living alone have experienced increased loneliness and social isolation. Um, a large amount of, the large amount of information that older people and everybody else have been receiving also has created more anxiety um, and concerns. People with chronic conditions have reported finding it very difficult to get access to, to medicines and ongoing care. But it's not all negative. I mean, in many contexts, um, COVID has created a, a situation where it's strengthened family and community ties, where older people have started to learn new skills, might be in terms of you know, access to social media and, and improving their IT skills, um, but also have continued to contribute incredibly as they did before the pandemic. Um, there's a great example um, in Ireland very early on in the pandemic uh, where there was a call for retired doctors and nurses. And within three days, 24,000 people um, came forward offering uh, their support. Uh, but I think, you know, your question was, you know, how have they experienced it? I think uh, everybody should be, if they've got parents or grandparents or, or older neighbours, they should ask them themselves. Today would be a good day to start. A uh, good introduction to this uh, important topic, uh, Alana. Um, evidence suggests that in terms of infection uh, and uh, disease, uh, COVID-19 has disproportionately affected older people. What does this actually mean? Yeah, good question. So COVID-19 affects people of all ages, yeah? Um, but the evidence suggests that people 60 years and older are more likely to experience severe illness when they're infected by COVID-19 um, and therefore have a higher risk of dying as a result of COVID-19. Just a reminder for those of you listening in today, you can ask your questions on the comments section of our Facebook page. You can also uh, ask your questions through our Twitter account uh, with hashtag AskWHO or indeed on our LinkedIn page uh, in the comments section. So we look forward to receiving your questions. Um, Alana, just if we go back to basics, um, the main ways of preventing infection. So um, for an older person, what are the main things that I can do to protect myself against COVID-19? Yeah, really important, Alison. So 
I mean, there are five major things that I think that people should be doing, yeah? And many of you probably know these, but it's really good to be reminded of them. So wash your hands frequently with soap and water and dry them really thoroughly or with alcohol-based rub, first one. Second one, cover your mouth and nose, uh, you know, in a flexed elbow or using a tissue um, when coughing and sneezing. Three, avoid touching, you know, your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Um, really important to try and avoid uh, the transmission of, of the virus. We need to clean and disinfect surfaces that, are, that we're touching uh, frequently. So we need to clean those really regularly. Um, and we need to keep physical distance, yeah? So we need to keep, WHO recommends a metre um, from other people um, and between yourself and, and other people. Um, and remembering that physical distance isn't social distance. So we just want the physical distance, but we want to stay connected. Um, and I would say a sixth one, if you are asked to wear a mask, wear a mask. Thanks, Alison. Thanks a lot. One of the things you mentioned there, Alana, was the importance of staying uh, socially connected. And of course, this is one of the things that we've all been confronted with uh, from the beginning of this pandemic. Um, and that's how difficult it can be to stay socially connected when there are physical distancing measures in place. Um, and with the social isolation that comes sometimes has result, sometimes has resulted from the physical distancing measures, this has led to loneliness and people feeling as though um, they're, they're out of touch with family members. What are things that uh, older people can do to stay mentally healthy as well as physically healthy during this pandemic? Mm. Um, you're completely right. And I think one of the, the key things is obviously um, staying socially connected. And while, and, th and that was the point also about, you know, we can remain physically distanced, but still socially connected. So it's really important to speak to your loved ones every day. Um, you can do that by telephone, by video calls, by messaging, um, by writing, by sharing photos. Um, and, and it's really important to maintain that connection. But there are lots of other things that we can do uh, in our homes and communities to remain uh, healthy. Keeping regular routines is actually really important. So getting up, getting dressed, you know, sleeping, the activities that you do. Being physically active is essential. So trying to not sit for too long periods of time, doing, if you can, based on what your doctor might have suggested, you know, 30 minutes a day of, of physical activity, um, making sure that the activities you choose are, are safe for you, drinking lots of water, especially in, in those countries where it's experiencing heat at the moment and eating well and having a really balanced diet, avoiding smoking and, and alcohol consumption is, is, is really important. Um, taking breaks, you know, there's so much information out there. So, you know, taking breaks from, from the, the, the incredible amount of information that we're receiving um, is really important. I would say there's maybe three other things that we should be doing as well. So if you have an ongoing health condition, make sure that you continue to, to uh, take care of yourself, yeah, to, to take your medications and, and follow the treatment regimes that, that you've agreed on with your doctor. If you have an emergency health condition, please seek treatment, yeah? Um, you know, ring, ring, the, ring the hospital, but actually actively seek treatment. And if you're sad and worried and stressed, you know, this is a really difficult time for many people, seek some support, yeah? Seek, uh, seek care. Okay, thanks a lot for um, uh, explaining how older people can keep uh, mentally healthy during uh, this pandemic. So we now have uh, questions starting to come in. Thank you very much for sending those. Uh, first question is from somebody who says, my mum has Alzheimer's disease and is 81 years old. Is she at high risk of contracting COVID-19? I am her primary caregiver and will be soon be going back to teach. So maybe just to say a few words, first of all, about Alzheimer's and, and dementia. So Alzheimer's is uh, the most common form of dementia. And dementia affects around 50 million people. About 50 million people have dementia around the world. 
Um, what is it? Uh, some of the um, aspects of the condition are loss of memory, uh, changes in behavior, and inability to do the things that you would normally do in your everyday activities. So to come to the question, um, high risk, is she at high risk of contracting COVID-19? And what are the things that are particularly important uh, as a follow-up for people with dementia and their caregivers during the pandemic? Yeah, really important. So um, the fact that she's an older person places her at increased risk, yeah? Um, you know, there are other risk factors like cardiovascular disease, diabetes and smoking, which would potentially also increase her risk, yeah? Um, so by the nature of her age, she is at increased risk of, of COVID if in contact. So it's very important for her um, that those, you know, trying to keep her hands clean, you know, keep physically distant, um, making sure that the surfaces are, uh, are clean, but also meaning that if she's receiving care from anybody else who might be coming into the home, that, that they're also symptom free and that they follow the really basic guidelines um, around, you know, uh, cough etiquette, around um, uh, keeping physically distant where that's possible. Often that's not possible and in those cases if somebody is working with your mum being able to wear a mask uh, properly is really important there's some great videos on WHO in terms of how to do that um, but also realizing that that um, with dementia it may be really important to repeat those messages frequently so that she can get access to them be patient and continue to do those it's really confusing having a change in your environment because often as long as that environment is very stable uh you know people with dementia you know function very well um so you know repeating those messages but also making sure uh that you get support um because you know caregivers of people with dementia also need support and WHO has got some great new tools, some tips and advice also for caregivers. Uh, it's, it's called I Support Light, but really worth looking at to support you as well as your mum. A lot, uh, uh, Alana. And uh, just to, as a reminder, people can find the uh, the documents and materials that are being discussed on, on today's program on on the WHO website. So, as a reminder to all of you who are just joining us, um, today our program is on COVID nineteen and older people. We have with us Alana Officer, who is an expert on older people, and. Um, uh, questions are coming in. Uh, thank you for sending them. You can send them on Facebook comments, on LinkedIn comments section, and also on Twitter at the hashtag AskWHO. So um, here's uh, quite a few questions come in now uh, from Facebook. Um, here's a first question about masks. Do older people need to wear a mask when outside? Um, so Great question. So it's really important for all of us, including obviously for older people, to be aware of what's happening within the community. So if there is very high community transmission, you know, of COVID-19 in, in the community, then the older person needs to be very careful in terms of contact that they might have. So if they're going out, obviously they need, to, you know, the five things that we just mentioned in terms of, you know, keeping their hands clean, keeping physically distant. Um, many uh, local governments and, and national governments are regulating use of, of masks. If that's happening, older people need to wear them as well. Um, it is recommended if there is community transmission to avoid older people going to more crowded spaces because it's much more difficult you're much more likely to be exposed to somebody who has COVID-19, uh, but also um, it's much more difficult to, to maintain physical distancing. So in that case, older people are recommended to wear medical masks, um, which provide them with uh, increased protection. Thank you very much. Another question from Facebook. Um, can exercise help prevent COVID-19 among older people? So exercise is just 
really important on a daily basis. And it's very important to, you know, we were talking about a little bit before, to, to do exercise every day, to keep your routine. So, you know, sleep well, um, uh, eat properly, you know, avoid smoking and, and alcohol. So all of these uh, behaviours are really important for, you know, maintaining your health and therefore decreasing your susceptibility in that sense um, uh, to COVID. But the most important thing is to uh, keep your hands washed, uh, keep physically distant, um, and, uh, you know, in that case, wear a mask uh, if you're asked to. Okay, thanks a lot. I'd like to just touch for a moment on, on something we've heard quite a bit about during the last months, and that's ageism in the context of COVID. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to that, Alana? First of all, what is ageism? Uh, thanks, Alison. So age is one of the first characteristics that we tend to recognise about somebody along, you know, the lines of, of what sex they are or what race they are. Um, and it's one of the main aspects that we tend to use to categorise people. Um, but because of that, it can also be the basis for incredible social, social uh, division, which can be incredibly harmful and unjust. So ageism is, is refers to the bias that, or the, pre the bias that we have against a certain age group. For example, people who are 60, or 60 and above or a particular cohort like, you know, boomers, for example. And that bias can be positive or negative, basically, and it may be something that we're really conscious of or we're not at all conscious of. Um, and that bias we can direct towards ourselves, yeah, um, and limit ourselves because we think we're, you know, too old or too young to do something. We can direct it uh, towards others. And it can also be very present in, uh, for example, in our healthcare institutions, in our long-term care, in, in, in our employment, yeah? So it has sort of three main characteristics. It's how we think about uh, age and aging, so the stereotypes, uh, how we feel about it, which is prejudice, and then how we act on it, which is discrimination. So that's really what it is. OK, thanks a lot, Alana. I'd like to come back uh, for a moment just to, again, some of the basics in terms of, first of all, in terms of symptoms. Can you say something about the symptoms uh, of COVID-19 among older people? Yeah. So most people um, that, that experience COVID-19 um, get uh, fever, cough, uh, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, pain in muscles, you know, uh, fatigue, yeah? But in fact, older people and other people who might have a weaker immune system can have sort of atypical uh, symptoms. So, for example, some may not get fever. Um, others might have sort of be slightly less alert. Um, uh, diarrhoea, for example, has been uh, a, a symptom in, in older adults as has delirium. So, you know, where, where people might be more restless or, or, or have illusions or a little bit less coherent in their communication. So older people have shown some sort of atypical sim symptoms from, from the more general ones that we see in most people. Okay, and as a follow-up question then. So when uh, an older person has one or more of these symptoms, what should they do? Yeah. So... Yeah. It's really important for older people to stay home and self-isolate if they've got minor symptoms, yeah? So if they've got cough or a headache or a minor fever, yeah, until they recover. You know, get somebody else to bring, you know, food or supplies or, or you know, uh, in terms of what you need. It's also important that they avoid having contact, if they think that they might have it, having contact with other people to protect other people also um, from COVID-19. But if you have a fever or cough or breathing difficulties, it's really important to get medical help. Um, and the best thing to do is ring ahead first. Um, you can tell them about any sort of other conditions that you might have um, and the medicines that you're having and then follow the advice of your local health authority because they're going to be able to direct you to the right hospital, which can mean that you get 
the, the, the right care as quickly as possible, but that you also avoid maybe uh, transmitting that infection to somebody else. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so again, we're here today live from WHO Geneva to talk about COVID and older people with Alana Officer. Thanks for sending in your questions. So we've got a question here from um, Emmanuel, who says, and this is on from LinkedIn, what could be the reason for the higher risk of COVID-19 infection in older people? Thanks. Uh, thanks for your question, Emmanuel. So what we can see from the evidence is that age is an independent risk factor. So older people are at increased risk of COVID-19. The other th factor is that we know that people with some other more chronic underlying conditions are also uh, at risk in terms of diabetes and cardiovascular disease and chronic respiratory disease. So, and as you get older, you are more likely to have one or more sort of chronic conditions. So age is a factor and the underlying chronic conditions, which are much more prevalent in older people, is also another factor which increases the likelihood of uh, severe illness and, uh, and worse outcomes like death in terms of older people. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to just stop for a moment or two on um, residential hair care homes, as a lot of people uh, do have family members uh, who are in uh, older person's homes, residential care homes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the situation, what we've seen in care homes, and uh, what can be done to prevent infection in care homes? Mm -hmm. um, so in many countries, evidence shows us that more than 40%, sorry, I'm on, <laughs> um, that more than 40% of uh, COVID-19 related deaths um, have actually been linked to, to long-term care facilities. And in some countries, that figure is as high as about 80%. Um, so... Uh, what we know is that there were weaknesses, unfortunately, in long-term care facilities before the pandemic. So often um, underfunding, uh, poor links between health and, and, and long-term care facilities, um, sort of staff being undervalued or, or, or overworked. Um, so those COVIDs really highlighted the weaknesses that existed, but also exacerbated challenges because, you know, it required much more intensive uh, prevention and control measures um, and, uh, and at the same time maintaining all of the essential services that older people within those facilities might need. Um, so that's been really complex. But, you know, we really need to work to improve and to strengthen our, our long-term care. And WHO has got some new guidance on that, um, and some, uh, there, there's some new policy, a new policy brief which has got uh, 11 objectives and key actions that, that governments can take to really start to strengthen their long-term care. So everyone should read that one. Thanks a lot for that. And of course, uh, this pandemic has shown uh, in many areas uh, some of the weaknesses in health systems and is an opportunity to build back better health systems um, after the pandemic. So going back to our questions from our viewers, thank you for sending in your, your questions again, Facebook comments, LinkedIn comments section and on uh, Twitter w at WHO, hashtag ask WHO. So here's a question from uh, Mutsta Bata Mead on Facebook um, and he says how can one older people maintain good mental health during COVID-19? Thank you, thank you very much for your question. It's really important and uh, some of the key things are um, maintaining your routine, so sleeping and eating and, and staying connected. You know a lot of uh, people have uh, interpreted a lot of the directives around social distancing and physical distancing is meaning that you need to stop being in contact with people. And physical distance 
isn't social distance. And it's really important that people remain connected with their friends and their families and they continue to engage. Um, the other things is, you know, keeping physically active, really important for, you know, physical and mental health um, and, uh, you know, eating well. Um, and, and also if you, I mean, reducing the exposure if you feel really anxious in terms of the amount of information you're getting it's actually quite important um, to reduce your exposure so maybe watch the news one or twice a day but don't have that constant you know overload of, of information um, and if you're feeling down and, and worried and anxious then you know speak to people talk to people about it and and get some help okay thank you very much uh uh, Alana, some good advice on keeping uh, mentally healthy for older people and indeed for all of us uh, during the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So can you just talk us through, um, Alana, what WHO has been doing in this area um, for older people during uh, the pandemic to pr protect older people uh, during the pandemic and beyond? Yeah. Um, so we've been doing a, a lot. I mean, a key uh, contribution that WHO has been making is in the development of guidance. So uh, there's been guidance on, on clinical management of, of older people with, with COVID, um, on how to maintain essential healthcare services and in ensuring that older people get access to their essential healthcare services. Um, we've developed some guidance on how do you... Uh, you know, in terms of long-term care facilities and how can you prevent and control COVID within those. As I said, I mentioned the policy brief also on how to strengthen and, and long-term care facilities within the context of the pandemic. We've put out some specific guidance just for older people themselves that they can access. Um, we have some uh, important guidance also on... Um, reducing elder abuse and violence against older people, which we have seen has increased um, during the period, certainly when there has been mobility restrictions, um, that's increased. So there's a lot of technical guidance um, that we've produced, which is relevant for supporting and caring for older people. Um, we release, release some new data. There's a new data portal, which is looking specifically at COVID and older people. It's really important to have access to accurate information so that that can also inform policy and practice. So there's been a lot of support, support that WHO is providing to better understand the, the situation for older people within the pandemic and provide an appropriate response. Okay, thank you very much. So another question that's just come in on LinkedIn, it's a very good question. How do you define old age and what age group is are we calling old age or older people? Older people. So, um, so generally we define sort of a cutoff in terms of age, often for, for different purposes, you know, for policy or uh, uh, access to particular services. In this case, older age um, we're referring to in the context of COVID as being 60 and above because that's where we're starting to see that there is uh, increased acceptability. Um, but, you know, what is, what is old age, yeah? So I think, you know, uh, we tend not to use the word in WHO old, um, and we tend to consider older people as anybody who's sort of, you know, uh, old, you know older than the other half of the population. So, you know, 50 and above uh, you know, uh, could be considered uh, older in that, in that regard. It's me. Maybe. Okay, thank you very it's much. It's me. Maybe. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alana. So a few more questions. Uh, this time we have a question from Facebook uh, from Mok Bansimba, and he asks, why are older people likely more likely to get infected than younger people? So, Mok, the older people are more likely to experience serious illness when infected with COVID. Um, 
but and that is because of age and because many older people have underlying uh, health conditions like diabetes and and uh, cardiovascular disease which makes them more at risk um but everybody all age groups are at risk of covid yeah so um older people like younger people and uh, need to take appropriate actions to protect themselves like uh like all of us like washing our hands and keeping physically distant and you know cleaning down surfaces and making sure that we you know cough in our elbow or dispose of uh um, tissues in a in a locked bin if need be so um we are none of us are invincible so we're all susceptible to it we all need to take some very basic uh, actions but because of age and because of underlying conditions that places older people at more at higher risk of serious illness when infected um and other complications Okay, well, thank you very much, Alana. I think that's a, quite a good point to end on, just a reminder to us all um, that uh, we're all susceptible. We all need to continue washing our hands regularly, uh, keeping physically distant, uh, and taking all precautions that we can to protect ourselves and our loved ones from um, a, a infection with COVID-19. So we've had a great audience today, uh, once again, from countries around the world. Uh, Indonesia, USA, Egypt, Argentina, Greece, Nigeria, Uzbekistan, Mexico, Philippines, South Africa, South Sudan, Uganda, India, Bangladesh, and many, many more. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us. We hope you've learned something about uh, COVID-19 and older people. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Great to be with you. Thank you.